This week, community groups will join together to say, we don't want Arizona in our towns. No more Arizonas in DC and no more Arizonas anywhere else. The Arizona is proof that police and ICE collaborations are dangerous and disastrous. Arizona has been a testing ground for programs like the 287G, Secure Communities, and the Criminal Alien Program. Federal immigration laws is an exclusive federal responsibility. The role of police is to keep our communities safe and not to destroy them. The program is supposed to be implemented in every jail across the country by 2013 and every state by 2011. The impact is unbelievable. In the first year alone, one million people have been subjected to secure communities queries and at least 58 or 5,900 U.S. citizens. The true number, though, is unknown because of complicated derivative citizenship laws. We can't allow DHS to escape public scrutiny by hiding behind jail walls or local law enforcement agencies. We need answers now. Secure communities and the other programs, 287Gs, that the government is using are programs that's going to adversely affect law enforcement's ability to serve the community. They are not compatible with community policing and other programs we have spent 20, 25 years building relationships through and implementing community policing in the many cities across America. And now these programs stand to reverse all of that and prevent us from really doing the kind of job that we need to do. These communities deserve policing services and good policing services and this program is going to prevent us from being able to deliver those services every day. How are our communities more secure when immigrants' fear of seeking law enforcement assistance is growing? How is DHS balancing enforce its enforcement mission with its equally important task of protecting immigrant victims of crime? Recently released memorandums of, a group of understanding with local law enforcement agencies reflect an absence of these procedures. These MOUs fail to address the security of immigrant communities. Without addressing these needs, immigrant women, employees assaulted by employers and exploited by employers will continue going to their jobs. Domestic violence victims will continue to stay with their abusive partners. Secure communities then makes us less secure as immigrant communities as a whole are unable to turn to law enforcement for safety and justice. I just don't understand why we are changing our policies, our long-standing policy in the District of Columbia, where our local police do not ask questions about immigration where our local police don't pretend to be immigration officers, where our local police are not the servants of the federal government. And I honestly, I was at the hearing, I sat through the hearing, I listened respectfully to our chief of police, but I still don't understand why she is proposing to do this. Because we are working well the way we've always worked. And I can remember the number of conversations I had with Chief Ramsey, where he never wavered for a moment right. on this important principle, that our police officers are not immigration officers. My name is Chris Newman, and I'm the General Counsel and Legal Director for the National Day Labor Organizing Network and I'm very pleased to be represented by the Center for Constitutional Rights and the Cordoza Law Clinic uh, in this important litigation. I came in this morning from Arizona, uh, where we've been working around the clock to stop what has been described as the most racist bill that the country has seen in a generation. And I was at a vigil the other day, and I wrote down a note that somebody wrote uh, <laughs> uh, at a vigil in Arizona, there were students praying, uh, praying for peace, and the note read, hate always loses. It's a universal truth, yes. and truth always prevails. Amen. Truth always prevails. The purpose of this litigation that we are filing today is to get to the truth about the Obama administration's policies to enlist police to enforce federal immigration laws. Everybody has seen 
the devastating consequences that 287G has had in Arizona and throughout the country. And yet, the Obama administration has been moving with breakneck speed and deceptiveness and dishonesty about the advancement of the Secure Communities Program. In November of last year, Janet Napolitano, heralding the one year anniversary of the program, incorrectly described undocumented immigrants as criminal aliens and indirectly uh, uh, implied that, that undocumented immigrants are, are threats to, to our communities. It's precisely this sentiment that conflates law-abiding immigrant future Americans with criminals, which is what gave rise to 1070 in Arizona. It is precisely programs like Secure Communities uh, that have been prop advanced by the Obama administration that have given rise to Arizona's uh, 1070. And so we're here today to file, because we have to, 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 to file in federal court to find uh, the truth about the Obama administration's programs to advance uh, police enforcement of immigration law. And, and of course, we are here to say that we want no more Arizona. In an economy where jobs and homes are lost and 401ks turn into 104ks, cities who are facing the worst recession since the Depression and are struggling with the inordinate cost of providing municipal services should not divert its precious resources and limited resources for local public safety by participating in the Secure Community Program. For the record, let me just say that the Secure Community Program is neither. It does not make us secure, and it does not contribute to the concept of true community. Rather, rather, it is the federal door and that this program allowed legal racial profiling and immigration abuse to walk in. SEIU is the largest union in America with 2.2 million members around the country a lot of whom are immigrants who are affected on a day-by-day -day basis on, with issues that take effect in places like Arizona. Well, we have been outspoken on our efforts to get comprehensive immigration reform done at the national level. And of course, in Washington, D.C., where we have about 16,000 members, we're also going to be outspoken, letting them, letting them know, letting the police chief know that we're not going to stand by and watch as our communities get targeted in the nation's capital. Right. The capital of freedom. We should be ashamed of ourselves trying to, by trying to implement secure communities in places like Washington, D.C. We don't need to go there in Washington. The Secure Communities Program does not make us secure. And it does not make us a community, as the Imam said. The Secure Communities Program is a rat. <laughs> That's right. Because when 88,000 children in recent years are left without parents, it's a rat. Right. When a man can spend six weeks in jail, in the D.C. jail, in the shadow of the Washington Monument, under a program that detains individuals, notwithstanding the Fifth Amendment, Ron Hampton, which says it applies not only to citizens, but to non-citizens. We don't have due process, we have no process. It's a rat. And they're trying to expand this program, as was said, to every jail in America by 2013. Isn't it strange, the web they weave when first they start to deceive. Secure communities doesn't make us secure. And that web won't end in Arizona. It only started there. It won't end throughout the Southwest or in the Midwest. It won't end in the East or the West. It will drive parents and families into the Atlantic Ocean and into the Pacific Ocean. And we've got to stop it now. I have the bill right here. You want to sign it? Hold it up. Yes, we'll sign it right now. The, uh, we're going to co-introduce this bill to stop 
the uh, Metropolitan Police Department from transmitting yeah. arrest data to ICE, and we're going to go to our colleagues and ask if they will co-introduce the bill and see how many of our colleagues will join us in this bill. I understand the enormous concern in the community which I share with regard to providing arrest data to immigration that can affect not only the lives of those who are arrested sometimes and unfortunately erroneously, but also their families. The implications can be very great. The people behind me understand this, and that's the reason why we're going to move forward to send a clear message to the chief that this, is, this has got to stop, and we'll move forward with the legislation. Thank you very much. Yeah.